from the News Channel 5 Network and Out and About Nashville. This is Out and About Today. Sponsored by the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. Well, hello, I'm Chuck Long, and welcome to a special edition of Out and About Today, a conversation with Levi Kreis. Many of you first became aware of Levi as the dazzling voice behind Del Shore's Southern Baptist Sissies, soul-stirring and out-music award-winning stained glass window. And that was just the beginning. He's a Tony Award-winning actor, singer, and piano wizard. Critics gush over him, say things like he's a rock star, he channels sex appeal and displays vocal abilities that just astonish, while Sirius XM Radio says to watch Levi play the piano is like watching somebody speak in tongues. We'll be talking about this incredible performer for the entire show. First, let's take a look at Levi in action. And if y'all ain't got something, you might as well hang it up because you ain't going to get nothing. But now we got something to get you real gone. Let's go, boy! Take it to church, Levi Christ. I tell you, a whole lot of shaking going on. Uh, I broke Great the bench that you. night. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I don't doubt it. How many benches have you broken? I, I have a long line of grand pianos across the country that I've wounded for oh sure. Oh my gosh, what a workout you get anytime you perform. Oh yeah, it's it's a blast. We have fun. We are so glad you're here. It's great to be the here. The entire show, we're going to be talking to you, how yeah. you got here, what's been happening through the career, what's coming up next. So yeah. sit back, you guys are in for a treat. Can't wait. We've been waiting for this for a long time. So we're going to talk a lot about the career and, like I said, and how you got here. But kind of, you've been doing music for a long, long time. So gospel is is in your DNA. Lord, I hope it works out for me because I don't <laughs> know how to do anything else. That's for sure. East Tennessee boy, grew Oliver up. Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Yeah, graduating class of five people. Tiny so, little community. I love it though. We, my mom had me on the road by the time I was 12 years old. So it's so fun to go back to those old churches across the southeast and now and then see your old stomping ground where it all began. Did you? You always love gospel music or are you one of those that were like oh I want to do rock not gospel I want to do pop not gospel well I think the thing that's informed what I do even to this day is the honky-tonk stride piano of southern gospel music you know and having that I mean I was uh, my cousins had a really great southern gospel group and they they had me as their piano player I mean that you grow up doing that stride piano thing and like even to this day even with million dollar quartet you realize oh that's that's just the signature what do you do with that except you know utilize it for your own stuff it's turned out pretty good I love that influence yeah it certainly has so when you eventually of course you were on the road with the gospel for a long time yeah you eventually made yourself uh, you made your way to Nashville so I did I did um, I, I first started my education here at Vanderbilt University uh, and then uh, in a pre-college program for my sophomore junior senior year full scholarship there classical piano got to transfer a lot of those things to Belmont University and uh, upon leaving Belmont just shy of my my degree I moved to to LA and found my way to, to film and stage yes you did unexpectedly now we're gonna we're gonna talk about when you got to LA and we're also gonna talk about your time in Nashville your your first stay here your first stint it was tough we're gonna talk about that later in the show sure um, because we we kind of like to know people's journeys and, and you've certainly had uh, an amazing <laughs> heartbreaking wonderful yeah. incredible journey so we're <laughs> gonna talk all about that but but first let's talk about though LA so you get to LA yeah uh, you go see and I, well, I mentioned at the top of the show stained glass window so many people know you from that song <laughs> It's interesting how that happened. I fell into the arms of a few Southern transplants when I moved to L.A. Uh, and we were walking down Melrose Avenue one day and saw the Zephyr Theater had an advertisement with this fella standing there, arms outstretched, wearing a, a crown of thorns. And, you know, being where I'm from, uh, I mean, of course, it was a part of me probably that thought it was blasphemous. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. and that's one reason why I didn't want to go in and see this play when my friends insisted that we go in and, and just take it advantage of the right timing and go in and so it was called Southern Baptist Sissies and 
by halftime, by intermission, I was just doubled over in a fetal position, just losing my mind because I thought I was the only one. I had been through my six years of conversion therapy and just didn't know anybody else other than my little support groups in secret. And to see the lives of these four guys just lived out in front of me and the inner turmoil just was nearly too much for me. But I met Dell that night and he immediately just took me under his wing and, and let me not only see the show as many times as I wanted for free to kind of heal the pain of the past, mm -hmm. but then he uh, encouraged me to express my own journey through sitting down and pinning uh, a song inspired from the play, which then became the, the theme song that I would sing at the end of every performance every night, Stained Glass Window. It's such a powerful, powerful, and I remember Dell even talking about, you know, he saw the light coming through the Stained Glass Window, you know, when, when you were mm -hmm. first singing that, it just, you know, so inspiring. Ends up in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at it because your performance, uh, you know, in the, the movie clip is just is amazing. So uh, we want to take a look. We'll talk about it on the backside, but this is Levi Christ and Stained Glass Window. You know, it's still, there's there's something about the play, the music, that of course the, that was the, the movie version of it, but it still, it, it has such an amazing impact every single time. I, I, was, just, we were, I was just telling you before, it's, just, it's hard to even watch those characters, I think sometimes, because, and gratefully now it's not because of, of my inner self needing to resolve, because I've gratefully found a place that is extremely important called forgiveness. But now I feel so much for the kids that I meet on the road that, that have that story still. And now that I'm back home in Tennessee, you know, you forget when you're living in LA and New York that these kids in 2018 still need to hear this message. I'm going to start preaching, Chuck. You need to keep moving. No, I'm going to be the pulpit. <laughs> I'm going so to get a little too, too wound up if you don't move no, me on. No, we love it. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break, and yes. then I'll let you preach some more after yeah, this. So, I, sounds um, good. We are looking forward to it. So stay tuned. When we return, our conversation with Levi Christ continues, and we'll talk to Tony. You're watching Out and About today.